Welcome to the second video lecture in week 4 of the discrete mathematics course. <clears throat> in this video lecture, we will continue with our understanding of induction. Now, to quick recap, we were looking at the proof techniques, namely to prove how to prove A implies B, and we have seen that there are quite a number of different proof techniques available to us. Constructive proof, proof by contradiction, contrapositive, induction, counterexample, and existential proof. Now, this is a slide I have shown you every time, which basically says that there is no rule of which proof technique should be applied to which problem. It's a art that you have to develop. Now to quickly recap of whatever things we have done till now, we have saw some tricks of how to split the problem into smaller problems, uh, depending on whether the B can be written as C and D, how to remove redundant assumptions, and thirdly, how to, to see that sometimes proving something harder or stronger can be easier. We also saw some proof techniques, namely we looked at the direct proof technique where one just works with A and then end up proving B or one can go backward meaning we can start simplifying B and slowly get to a situation where A implies C can be easier to prove, where C is equivalent of B, just a simplified form. So we saw some few examples of this. We also looked at the case study. So in this case, if we split the assumptions into some constant number of cases, so what happens is that if you write A as C or D, then A implies B gets split up as C implies B and D implies B. This particular case study proof is something relevant to the proof of proof by induction also. We will see it very soon. So other than the case study proof, we also looked at the proof by contradiction, namely proving A implies B is same as proving not B and A is false. Or in a similar way, one can prove A implies B by proving that not B implies not A. This second one is known as a proof by contrapositiveness, and this can be useful particularly when B can be written as C or D. In that case, A implies B can be written as not C and not D implies not A. We also saw this case of proof by counterexample where if we have given a problem of the form for x, for all x, proof that uh, proof for this proof a x implies b, to disprove this statement, one needs to give an x such that a x doesn't imply b x, or in other words, we have to give an x such that b x is not true, but a x is So this was the proof technique that we saw last week. In the last video lecture, we started with this proof of induction. Now the proof of induction is very similar to the case studies proof, except that in case studies, one splits the assumption into a constantly many number of cases. And thus the problem gets split up into a constantly many and of some small problems. But there are times when one can split up the, the assumptions into an infinitely many but countably many number of cases. So in that case, of course just in the case of case studies, the problem gets split up into an and of an infinitely many number of problems. Sub problems are usually we look at parameterized by some parameter of the input or integrate by some parameter of the input. 
So in other words, one would like one writes this whole thing of A implies B as P1 and P2 and so on as the infinite collection of them. So thus to prove A implies B, one needs to prove that this PI is hold for all the I's. So we saw some few examples of how to split up the problem. So the example that we saw last time was that for all n, if we have to prove that for all n, if we have to prove that the sum of First n integers is n into n plus 1 by 2, we can then split up this problem as for a particular k, the sum of k integers, first k integers is k into k plus 1 by 2, and then we have to prove that this statement is true for all k. So this problem becomes we have to prove uh, is basically and of all the PIs for i ranges over all the possible integers for natural numbers. Similarly, if the problem is for all n greater than or equal to 1, prove that 11 divided 23 power n minus 1, we can split up by, again, we can end up on n, which means that we can say that, okay, pkb 11 divided 23 power k minus, so it should be minus 1, minus 1, 23 power k minus 1, and we have to prove that this statement is true for all the pk's. The third example is the a and b m inequality, namely the average of or arithmetic mean of any n the positive real numbers is more than or equal to the nth root of the product of this n real numbers. And again, here we insert on n and thus we define pk as take any k positive real numbers, then prove that statement for that those k real numbers, and then pn or then the actual problem says that for all k greater than or equal to 1, prove that pk is true. Now, these are all examples of how a problem can be split up into an infinite number of subproblems. But once you have an infinite number of subproblems, how do we solve them? To prove this infinite number of subproblems, Surely we cannot go and solve every one of them because there are infinitely many. So one way of getting around it is first prove the first one is true, first prove that p1 is true, then prove that for any k, if pk is true, then pk plus 1 is true. If you can solve that, we expect that. So the idea is that if you look at this whole real line, then I have first proved that P1 is true, and this statement says that if P1 is true, then P2 is true. Now if P2 is true, then P3 is true, and so on. So I can keep on basically filling up the whole real line, meaning for all k between 1 to infinity, I would be able to prove that this statement is true. So by doing so, that means first proving P1 is true, and then by proving pk is true implies pk plus 1 is true, we would be able to prove that for all n greater than or equal to 1, the problem pn is true. And hence we will be done. Now for this one, what we need is a particular axiom which states that whatever we are doing is correct. And this is what it says. It is called the principle of mathematical induction. And it says that for any predicate, if we first prove p1 is true, and for all k greater than 1, if I can prove pk is true implies pk plus 1 is true, 
then that means that for all k, we end up proving pk is true. It's a roundabout way of proving that for all k, pk is true. It's a very powerful technique that we have, uh, we will be seeing more of it in the next couple of weeks. Now, so to prove this statement using the mathematical induction, there are three basic steps. The first step is what we call as base case, which basically means that P1 is true. Note that all the three cases is true, is important. Namely, if I don't start with the base case, then there is no way of starting this whole process. So the base case is required. We have to first prove that P1 is true. Second case is that we have to assume, this is called the induction hypothesis, assume that pk is true for some k greater than or equal to 1. And say that okay, if pk is true, then using inductive hypothesis prove that pk plus 1 is true. Now, these three steps, if you can solve them, then we prove that the whole problem is. All the three steps are essential. So the steps are basically E1 is true, then defining the induction hypothesis, and then using induction hypothesis prove the next one is true, thus the inductive step. So in the last class we saw one particular example of how to use induction, mathematical induction for proving the sum of First n integers in n into n plus 1 by 2. In this video, let us look at a second one. Now, to prove this, this problem of 11 divides 23 n minus 1, of course, we have to now follow the three basic steps namely, keep a base case, induction hypothesis, and inductive step. So, in other words, this is the problem. The pk says that 11 divides 23k minus 1 and we have to do the base case, namely p1 is true, inductive hypothesis, namely let's assume for some pk, for some k pk is true and inductive state assuming k is pk is true, prove that pk plus 1 is true. Now putting the values of pk or statements of pk and pk plus 1 in this setup, the thing that we have to prove is that the base case becomes 11 divides 23 power 1 minus 1. The inductive hypothesis says that for some k, 11 divides 23 k minus 1. And assuming that 11 divides 23 k minus 1 proves that 11 divides 23 power k plus 1 minus 1. And now let's see how to prove them. First of all, the base case 11 divides 23 power 1 minus 1. Now, this is obvious because 23 power 1 minus 1 is 22, which is 11 times 2. And the inductive hypothesis states that 11 divides 23k minus 1. Now, assuming this 11 divides 23k minus 1, we have to prove that 11 divides 23k plus 1 minus 1. Now, let's see how to solve that. So, 23 power k minus plus 1 minus 1 is nothing but 23 times 23 power k minus 1. If I write 23 as 22 plus 1, we get this number, which is 22 times 23 power k plus 23 power k minus 1. Now, by induction hypothesis, 11 divides this 23 k minus 1. And the first term, which is the 22 times 23 power k is divisible by 11 because 11 divides 22. So thus 11 divides both this term and this term and thus 11 divides the sum of this term which is 23 power 2k plus 1 minus 1. So thus as you can see that the inductive step is not a hard thing to prove. One can easily get the inductive step if we follow it correctly, we have to apply this usual techniques of direct proof of proof by contradiction. 
But this inductive state, the base case and the induction hypothesis, along with the, of course, the principle of mathematical induction, helps us to prove that this statement is true for all k, or in other words, for all k 11 divided 23k minus. Thus, we have proof that for all n, 11 divides 23 n minus 1. Again, I ask you guys to prove this statement or try to prove this statement without using induction. Now, proving some statements like this without using induction can be quite a tricky job. I will finish this video today leaving two exercises. The first one is proof that the sum of 1 plus 3 plus 5 till 2 power 2 is n minus 1 is n square for all n. So in other words, the sum of first n odd numbers is n square. And the second one is that if x is greater than minus 1, prove that for all n, 1 plus x power n is greater than 1 plus n x. So these are the two exercises which can be solved using the uh, induction technique that we have seen so far. In the next video, we will see interesting versions of this induction hypothesis which will help us to solve in more interesting problems.